Hello, everyone. Dr. Lisa Piper here with Wendy Cohen Osborne. We are the founders of Code Health and the C3 podcast, Code Conscious Conversations. We're here today with a very special guest, Nima Farshid, founder of Gaia Healers. And before we start talking too much about your journey and all the incredible work that you've done in this world, I want to say we met in a pretty odd way. We met in a geodesic dome on the boardwalk in Honolulu, virtually during the pandemic. <laughs> Absolutely. And and after we started talking to each other, because I was interested in your BioWell device, which we'll learn more about here shortly, it was pretty interesting because you were the only person that I met at that whole wellness conference. And then as it turns out, we both live in Florida. So it was easy for us to connect and, you know, and really I ended up with the BioWell device and research and all that, which is exactly what we're going to get into. So... Wendy, do you want to small start? world, right? What a small world. Yeah, it, yeah, it is a small world. It really is. And Nima, welcome. Welcome to the C3 podcast. Well, it's a pleasure and honor to be here with you guys. You know, I've been, you know, around this uh, the journey of uh, the involvement of Code Health and uh, the powerful, you know, movement that you guys are making. So it's a pleasure and honor to be here along the sides and helping you guys, you know, shine your bright light. I haven't known you as long as Lisa has, but your conference, the Gaia Healers Conference, was actually the first conference in what I would call biohacking, a biohacking conference that really opened my eyes to this unbelievable world that Lisa and I have been experiencing for this last year and a half. And I just want to know what I've never asked you this question. What actually inspired you? to start Gaia Healers? Oh, great question. Yes, I did meet, uh, meet Dr. Dr. Lisa in a virtual world thing at uh, one of these events that we were attending at a time. I went through it and that was uh, that was my, my story. That's why I was there to share my story about how, you know, I came around this, uh, this technology and, you know, how it's been uh, so powerful in my own life. And now it's, uh, you know, resonating and replicating uh, to many other lives and many other, uh, you know, cities and countries and areas. So the way that I got introduced to Gaia Healers, the reason I wanted to put in, you know, Gaia Healers together, you know, I'm always going through a healing journey myself. You know, during my journey, I felt so lonely. I felt like I really didn't have anybody that understood me. I felt uh, alone that I'm going through this journey by myself. I didn't want that for anybody else. I felt like, you know, as a human race, you know, we're, I believe in oneness that, you know, you know, we're all together. And I believe that, you know, through happy times and through sick times, we should be there, we should be supporting each other, and we should, uh, you know, really be that, that the powerful energy that, that we need at, you know, specific times. So Gaia Healers uh, was born based on the, the idea and the, all the research that I was doing um, for my own healing journey, going around the world, going to the different conferences, meeting with top doctors and shamans and holistic healers. You know, I wanted to everybody to have access to this information. I wanted to uh, create a network that, you know, all the research that I'm doing, all the information that I'm gaining, I'll be able to sh be shared with a network of people that were, you know, on the same mission. So that's why, you know, we created uh, the first community that we created was called the Lightworkers. And this was uh, created for, for Lightworkers, for people that want to, you know, do better in this world, that want to, you know, do better things. They want to improve humanity. They want to really get humanity to the peak in all avenues. And you know, in field of energy, in field of medicine, field of spirituality, a community of people that, that want to push the envelope and want to, you know, get more out of life and they believe in the power of themselves. So I felt like there, this needs to be in a specific place that once we have all this energy in one spot, then we can co-create. So that's how Gaia Healers was born and that became uh, the center of education based on um, all the research, based on all the the work that now we're doing with the viable technology and uh, now it's, you know, it's becoming a, a global company. So for those of people that are listening right now that don't know about the BioWell technology, can you explain a little bit about it? BioWell is, uh, is a technology that I discovered during my healing journey. So I was, doctors gave me two weeks to live 12 years ago. This was something very severe, something that really 
made a shift in my life to the point that I wanted to learn more about, you know, how I, how our beautiful environment and how we can influence our bodies with our environment and with our thoughts and our actions. So Biobel is a technology that measures the energy, measures the, the flow of energy in the human body. It monitors uh, the flow of energy. So this is a technology that gives us information, for example, before and after meditation. We can do a baseline scan to see like how our energy body is. And then uh, after meditation, we can scan again, and then it will show us that like, uh, we were able to like, improve you know, autonomic nervous system level or on a psycho-emotional level. This is a technology that came around in the 1970s. There's a lot of research behind it. There's a work of uh, Albert Pop, uh, Nikola Tesla, Peter Mandel, and finally, Dr. Konstantin Korotkov in Russia that they did 25 years of uh, scientific research on curly and photography in order to uh, create a global database. So now, you know, everybody that gets a BioWell device, that's a curly on photography machine. And uh, the data that we pick up from there gets uh, compared to the global database that the BioWell company has created. So now this is, a, uh, you know, creating a pathway for anybody that wants to get the insights into their holistic health and their energy wellness. So all of these practitioners that have a BioWell device they input all of this information, the information is compiled, and people have access to it. So what type of research have you been doing as of lately that you can talk about that are, is adding to this collection for the other researchers and practitioners to look at and to use for their uh, holistic practices? Yes. So nowadays, you know, this is a time and age just to get a revolution in wellness, you know, that we're dealing with a lot of new modalities in bioenergy and biofield technologies. So BioWorld helps us, you know, to measure that, to measure the bioenergy and the influence of, you know, different technologies, different supplements, different products on our wellness. So we have, uh, we work with many, um, you know, companies that they create their own products, they have their own technologies that we research for them. And uh, we show that you know, how their technologies are influencing uh, people in energy, people in people's energy in real time. And you and Dr. Karatkov have also been jet setting from what I have heard and have seen. And can you tell us a little bit about all of the places that you've gone bringing the BioWell device and utilizing it? This is some pretty incredible, like sacred sites. I mean, I've, I've, I don't know, I've seen Machu Picchu, I've seen pyramids or Egypt or so. I mean, you tell us about these sacred sites and what drew you there and what did you find in your research? Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is such a fascinating science that you can't help it, but want to discover more and more. So, you know, after I used a bio device for myself to like, you know, be able to really become a master of my own energy body, then, um, you know, it's a research instrument that, you know, it has different attachments that we can connect to it. And uh, we can research like energy of environments. We can research water. So uh, these sort of different sensors that we can connect to it. One of my favorite center sensors is the Sputnik, which is uh, it's like an antenna that we connect to the bio device. This will give us information about the energy of environment. So for example, you know, if you live in a house, then you can see like what room in a house has better energy. Or if there's a room that has the lowest energy, then, you know, we can maybe work on uh, feng shui or different modalities to like, you know, bring the energy up in those areas so we can live in a, a very high energy environment that's you know good for our energy of health and wellness. So we wanted to do, we wanted to understand we wanted to understand how the energy of environment actually influences us. There's a lot of research stories we hear about people going to like sacred sites and uh, they get healed from different you know misalignments or different issues that they have. So this was always very fascinating to me and to Dr. Krotko. So Dr. Krotkov has done a, a lot of uh, research in a lot of different countries. This was always, you know, very fascinating to me because and I'm very good friends with Dr. Krotkov. You know, I went, uh, because of my journey, I went to Russia at the time. I met with him in person. But you started a, a very, you know, powerful uh, connection with him that over the years, it has, you know, it's really grown to a point that, that uh, I'm his point of uh, contact in the States. Whenever he comes here, he stays with me. He wants me to make me the, the next Dr. Konstantin Korotko, that's what he said. Um, his, uh, his prototype. So whatever that he does, he usually shares with me. We're always on phone calls, on direct meetings. He wants to really transfer all the knowledge, all the work that he has done in you know, the last 40, 50 years 
uh, he wants to kind of like transfer it to me to kind of like, you know, take this science forward and be able to do the work that, uh, that he has done. So I love to go to different energy spots and I like to understand how they can influence the, the energy of the human body. So, you know, laws of resonance. We talk about like, you know, if we go to a place that high energy, then the high energy of that environment will directly influence the, uh, the energy of people that are there. For that reason, I wanted to understand, for example, like how elev- is, is elevation part of healing? So that's why I went to Machu Picchu. And I wanted to go out to measurements like at the bottom of Machu Picchu and then at the top to compare, the, you know, the data together to see, you know, if elevation really has a, that big of an influence or healing. Because uh, there's a lot of data that, you know, people that live in like high altitudes, they live longer lives, they have less like issues, uh, you know, with their energy bodies or physiological systems. So, you know, these are all ways that we can kind of see, does that make sense? Is it a myth? Or is it something that we can actually measure? I've been to Machu Picchu. I've measured the energy there. Fascinating results there. It's one of the highest energies that I have collected. Um, I've also been to Chichen Itza, to Stonehenge. We've been to many, many different ancient sites. We just came back from Egypt from a, a three-week tour throughout all the different sites, uh, all the different c- cities in Egypt. Um, I was there with Dr. Kratkov. This was an event that was organized by Gaia TV uh, for us to go there and to, to see if we could find something that was uh, really interesting. So we could create a documentary about Eret on Gaia TV. So that was actually a, yeah, very fascinating research that uh, we found some very powerful areas of energy in Egypt. Like even at times, this completely shut down our, our uh, recording equipments when we got to those zones to pick up information. So all of these will be aired on Gaia TV, um, hopefully uh, very soon. Oh, that's incredible. It, it's like almost like you're a pseudo archaeologist. Instead of searching for fossils, you're searching for energy. I, you know, yes. all, all you're missing is the hat and the whip, like Indiana Jones, right? Indiana like, Jones, all right. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Can you share with us just something like a little snippet of what you found there to be just, you know, a little teaser about what was the coolest thing that you found while you were in Egypt? Yes. So in Egypt, you know, th- there's a lot of stories that they talk about how like the pyramids, pyramids were built for, you know, for like the, the pharaohs or the, you know, to use their bodies there so that uh, they could become like mummified. But once we went there and we did the research, we, we realized that, you know, that this is absolutely false. And, you know, there's so much science. There's so much research that has gone into the astrological positioning of these uh, structures to the, even with the respect of the, the winds from the north, from the south, from the west, they have created pretty much uh, live entities using structure. So the pyramids are very, very advanced technology that, you know, even to this day, we can't really understand, you know, the magnitude of the possibilities that they had um, during those ancient civilizations. You know, when we would get to some specific areas that, that people would just call them tombs, once we went there, and we had a special permission that we could go to areas that uh, like your you know, average public can't go there. So we got to see some like very, very powerful structures that were, uh, were energy generating you know, systems, that they were like a, a power grid that was uh, designed to generate power to do a lot of work. So that was one of the most fa- fascinating uh, you know, research points that we discovered of the the geometrical patterns of uh, shapes of these structures, how they can amplify the energy of environment to a point that becomes a usable energy. That's very cool. You know, talking about these accessories like the Sputnik, we we also had the opportunity to test our products with the water sensor. And so not only can you actually test your environment, but you can test liquid as well. And you can see what, you know, you can compare different liquids to each other and see, you know, what the energy patterns look like in the liquids. That's pretty cool, too. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, the water sensor, as you mentioned, that's uh, powerful to, you know, to research how we can influence water. You know, when we research, for example, our human body, we see that, you know, our bodies are about 70% water. Our brain is about 90% water. So now, you know, more and more we research on water and the power of water and the power of it holding energy and influencing that energy into creation. 
So these are some really powerful uh, effects that, you know, from the doc- from the work of uh, Dr. Emoto, Dr. Gerald Pollack, and uh, a lot of amazing pioneers in this field that, you know, we're getting amazing, amazing data of now how to work with our inner bodies, inner water, so to amplify our energy, to, you know, increase our energy. It's, for example, in- instead of drinking like a cup of coffee in the morning, imagine drinking a cup of water that would give you as much energy, but in a, in a very clean, lasting form. That would be amazing. That would be right. Yeah, it would be incredible. You know, talking about something like that, how do you see the future of science and health from a conscious perspective? I mean, I feel like Nikola Tesla already touched on this. You know, he, he mentioned that the future of medicine is, is the frequency and vibration. So, if we truly, you know, pay attention and we really look at our environments and ourselves and we study. On nature, we realize that, you know, truly everything is frequency and vibration. So, you know, the future of medicine, as I see it moving that direction, is very exciting. Now, how we're seeing with biophotonics playing a big, big field in the healing game and how, you know, there's a frequency medicines or frequency beds, med beds that are coming around that is proven what Tesla told us many, many years ago. Years ago. Yeah. Or, and, or one drop. Right, the frequency <laughs> of one okay. drop, the That's water, right. one yeah. just, the water. frequency yeah. of code, yeah. the frequency of code. Exactly, and that's why I love what you guys are doing with your product, product of the future. That you're using uh, frequency and vibration and water to influence energy and uh, the physiological system, and right. that's really where we need to be headed, all of us. You know, right from the time that I met you, it seemed like you were everywhere. You were everywhere. Everywhere I looked, there was Nima. <laughs> I was like, does this... Loving an energy center. <laughs> does he sleep? Does he even sleep? <laughs> Nima, Nima's really... A, he's a pyramid. He's yeah. actually a pyramid. I'm really quantum. You're just seeing all these... Quantum. Energy. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us, Nima, what does the future of Gaia Healers look like? I mean, you've, you've got all this involvement with education and research and, you know, what can we look forward to from you coming up here in the next year or so? You know, my mission is to create a spiritual workforce. So that's why, like, you know, I'm so motivated. I'm so dedicated uh, to this job. Like, I see how we can shift powerful energy and how we can, you know, really shift ascension of humanity, different types of uh, areas of education and you know, ways that we can support people going through their awakening. So Gaia Hitler's, our mission is to create the, the next level of wellness. Our goal is we've done right now, we've created a software now that will take the viable information and we'll, uh, we'll analyze it to make uh, recommendations based on the, the research that we've done in the last you know eight to 10 years and the research that we continually are doing with a lot of companies like yourself. So the more and more that we can feed information into our system, our network of uh, global practitioners, I mean, we have over 1,500 practitioners now. Uh, we're in over 40 countries. So then we can really, you know, take the information that we're researching, that we're developing here, and we're, we can feed it throughout the world to create a very powerful resonance. A decentralized wellness system is what really is my true mission. We are very close to getting there powerful. We have many, we have over 600 centers that are partnering with us. We have billion dollar investors that are coming on board to make this mission a reality. So it's very, very, very exciting times. It's so exciting. You are an amazing businessman and a researcher, and you clearly have a mission. And if you were to give advice to someone that's just starting their journey, what advice would you give them? I have no limits. You know, we are co-creators, and I believe that, you know, this is a realm of creation. And I believe that we're here to truly bring about what, uh, what we truly want and desire and as long as that want and desire is uh, in accordance with the goodness for all, then we can very quickly manifest and we can uh, create what we want. But, you know, of course, there's rules, there's laws that, you know, what we want to wish for, we want to wish for what is going to benefit everyone. And uh, if we have faith and we can have concentration and meditation and really, you know, it's very simple. It's just like, you know, a matter of having faith in ourselves and believing that what we want to do is going to influence and having a bigger, you know, image than just like, what am I going to do that's going to benefit me, 
we need to, you know, change that mindset. This is not the time for that mindset. That was a uh, previous, you know, way of thinking. Now there's a revolution of wellness. Now there's a revolution of thinking. Now, if you notice all the companies that are winning are companies that are empowering other people. So this is the era of empowerment. If you can come up with a way that you can empower other people, then you will absolutely be rewarded for that because uh, you're helping humanity. So it's just a very simple formulation that anybody can follow. That's incredible advice. And I think it's really sound advice. And it's a matter of sharing as much knowledge that you have with everyone so everyone can benefit. Because if someone else learns just a little bit from what you're telling them, they can then expand on something that they didn't even realize that they have the ability to expand on because they learned it from someone else. So I think that's great advice. Yeah, and it becomes a ripple effect. So, you know, when you do something that is resonant the higher realm, then we're not alone. It's just like, you know, we're not the people that are doing it. We have a lot of uh, universal help because now our thought is not about just ourselves, but it's about wholeness. That brings a lot of powerful forces that can help us into uh, manifesting and bringing our ideas into uh, fruition. Yeah, and I think if you're new to biohacking, you know, connecting with the the right group of people. I mean, Nima, you've built an incredible community of healers and like-minded people. And it's really important that if you're new on your journey or you're having a healing crisis and you want to connect to other holistic health practitioners or naturopaths or, you know, anyone that's in complementary and alternative medicine. I mean, the community that you built is just an incredible place for people to ask questions. I mean, I'm part of your community and and I, I, I see the board and the board, you know, somebody asks a question, either you answer it or somebody else answers it. It's a place for people to connect and build community nothing in your life is going right for you, then you've got to take yourself and put yourself into another environment with another community or another group of like-minded people that are on the same mission that you're on that really resonate with the calling of your soul. Thank you for creating that community because it really is, it's beautiful. You know, it's my pleasure. I mean, you know, that's a a scientific fact that, you know, if our, if our vibration is low, then automatically we're going to be having like, we're going to have negative thinking. And once we have negative thoughts, then that's what we're creating for ourselves. So now, just like the way you said, you know, if we can have support, if we can have an area that we can go to, that we can deal with people that have higher energy, they have a higher understanding, just by helping us, you know, elevate our way of thinking, that can become like the most powerful tool that can have access to. And then once we're going through the process of, I call it ascension or awakening, you know, it, it gets lonely out there because, you know, once you are starting to go through it, you will realize that none of your friends, your family, like nobody around you is going to resonate with you. That's, I mean, that's what I experienced myself. I needed support. I needed a community in order to say, it's okay. You know, what you're experiencing is okay. You are fine. I just, I needed that. So I feel like, you know, having a community and being a part of a community that helps us trust ourselves and to have that faith to, you know, to walk the walk and talk the talk and walk through the path, then that becomes extremely powerful. Yeah, it's a daily journey, just becoming the best version of yourself. It's a practice, you know, and do you have a daily practice? Is there any, you know, like for me, I meditate every day. I do yoga and stretch and exercise. Wendy dances. I mean, she's awesome. And what do you do? I have a very special meditation practice that I do every morning that involves like a water meditation. I wake up with, I love to do meditations with sunrise. Because, uh, you know, as the sun is rising, the frequency that the rays that are hitting Earth, it's, uh, it's the most healing frequencies that we can uh, have access to. So that's almost like the most powerful red light therapy that you can ever have. So by waking up with the sunrise, I like to ride uh, uh, three different sessions of six minutes each. So, and this is all like a, a breath work. So I do three six minute sessions, breathing in for four seconds and then exhaling for four seconds. What I do is what's, what changes that for me is that, that my mindset. So on the first set of my six-minute breath work, what I will pay attention to is only my breath. So for six minutes, I'm listening to, um, I have a specific app that gives me two different music tones. With one tone, I can inhale, and with one tone, I can exhale. 
So once I do it for once I do this for six minutes, that really equalizes my uh, autonomic nervous system. So this balances my system out, and then I feel it. I feel this level of very like calmness and coherence. So then after that, I'll continue another six minutes. What I do is that I think about love, because every day it's so powerful that if we can every morning bring that energy of love into our system. I mean that is the most powerful vibration. So if you can start your day that way, then you will realize that you know how you influence other people throughout your day, because now you're vibrating in that frequency. So what I do is I do six minutes of when I'm inhaling, I say I love me, I love me, I love me, I love me. So like four times in my mind I say I love me, and then as I'm exhaling I say I love you, I love you, I love to you, I love you. So this way, and I, I think about love. I think about my pets. I think about you know what brings the love to my life, and by doing that, I'm you know really raising that frequency within myself. So then, after that six minutes, then I feel just like everything is love. I mean, you feel that you really just feel very light. And then I do six minutes of just listening to the sounds of birds and getting out of my own system. So now this way, when we get out, now we are more. Connected to to wholeness, we're connected to the universe, and if you can practice that to get to that stillness, oh my God, that becomes so powerful. I mean, most of my business ideas comes to me when I'm in that point because they're not my ideas; it's the universe communicating with me. They're just the gifts that I we can receive at that point. So that is my morning sessions. Every morning I do that. Usually I have a bottle of water. I hold that, put it in front of me as the sun is hitting it. Then I pick it up at the end of my meditation, and I、um, transfer all of those energies that I built within myself into the water, and then I drink that water. That's beautiful. That's really beautiful. That's I've done、cool. that kind of thing with full moon, you know, like the energy of the full moon and leaving the water out, and you know, just that's you powerful. Know, yeah, I mean, all that's that powerful that- too. Yeah. Yeah, but I love the sunrise and then putting your intentions into it. That's a beautiful practice. I mean that's how I healed myself. So I mean anybody that's gone through any kind of a journey, you can replicate that for yourself, and I guarantee you it's going to be very powerful. Thank you so much for sharing this, you know, Nima. I, it's just always so enlightening speaking with you, and I learn so much every time that we have conversations. And I did not know this about you. Thank you so much. Of course, my pleasure. Yes. Thank you for sharing it with all of us. Thanks for listening to the C three podcast. Find past episodes and subscribe on our website, CodeHealthShop dot com, or Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Spotify, and YouTube. The Code Girls appreciate discussing conscious living with inspiring guests who make a difference. Remember. Conscious living starts with conscious conversations. Until next time, be intentional, stay inspired, practice gratitude, be well, and feel the drop. drop.